Okay, so I just kind of want to show you real quick. Uh, this will, before you even take the engine apart or as you're doing valve adjustments, I just kind of wanted to show you uh, the rocker arm and the uh, valve cover assembly and kind of how it works, like how it works that you can adjust valves from the outside and what exactly is going on when you actually move uh, these valve adjusters. So if you look really closely, I'm going to try to, I got to sit really still. So I'm actually going to start wiggling back and forth. And what it's doing is it's just it's just moving this to the left and right. See? So now that's all the way one way. And that's all the way the other way. I'll just keep going back and forth for a second. So you can see, I mean, it only moves a few millimeters. But that's all it's doing is when you actually are gapping your valves... Uh, externally using these uh, adjusters this is what it's actually doing it only moves at a few millimeters it moves this entire shaft left and right anyways that gives you an idea um, so I'm just cleaning up the valve cover and I'm gonna throw uh, some new gasket material on there some new gasket maker and then uh, we're gonna torque these bolts down and then we're gonna test the compression see what we got Okay, so I got my bead of uh, gasket maker. Um, I have to let it sit for an hour before I can torque this to spec. These are going to be torqued to the same 70 to 104, just like the other 8 millimeter bolts. So uh, wait uh, about another 45 minutes, and then we'll torque them to spec. And then once we're there, I'm going to do the valve adjustment, and then we'll... Uh, We'll test the compression and see where we're at. I don't need to put the carburetor on and all the water valves or the water hoses and all that stuff to test compression. So, in fact, when you do when you do test compression, you're supposed to uh, slam the gas pedal to the floor because the intake is supposed to be as wide open as possible. So, we'll see where we're at. Okay, so update. Um, I went ahead and I pulled the cam out to validate it or verify it uh, against the uh, the service manual and basically if you measure the long length the long lengths of the lobes um, if it if it's if your caliper reads less than 31.52 millimeters then the cam is worn and you need to replace it so I actually was at 31.6 you know I'm, I'm I definitely have room to wear on the cam um, the way that you check the, the wear, they don't really have a way to check the wear on uh, the lifters themselves uh, for, on the rocker arms. So I have, the jury's kind of out on that. So what I, I'm actually just going to replace them. Um, that's just going to be what I do. But the, the, the purpose of this little video clip is going to be to talk about the Pittsburgh compression tester. I just came across a... a, a, a somebody else's YouTube video because I'm, I'm just dying here trying to figure out what's going on with my compression. The most, uh, the most compression I can pull is 90 PSI. And that's with a brand new head, brand new valves, brand new cylinder, brand new piston, brand new piston rings. Um, I've even actually got, you know, uh, I guess you might have, you might say, no, I've run, I've run the engine a little bit. I was going to say, you might say I have a, a, an oiled cylinder, but I don't, I don't even have an oiled cylinder, but I was pulling 90 PSI and I'm just so frustrated trying to figure out, well, what is going on? I just pulled the cam out, validated it. It's within spec. Timing is good. I know the timing is just dead nuts on. So I, I'm, going, I'm going back to the WeberNet, to the other, the other folks out there uh, who, can, who can share a nugget with me. And, and I found it. I found the golden nugget. So what's, what's happening is this Pittsburgh uh, compression gauge that you can buy from Harbor Freight has this rubber... Um, extension hose and it's convenient don't get me wrong it is convenient however it's a soft rubber and it actually acts more like a shock absorber when when compression hits the hose the hose like will will, will expand and, and, and like a shock absorber it will actually make you read uh, a reading on here that is less than um, what the what the true compression is so along with this and this this again came from uh, somebody's comment in another video 
um, it didn't even come from the video. It came from somebody's comment. He said, hey, the Pittsburgh gauge is fine because somebody else was trashing it and saying, no, you got to use the Bosch one with the solid, with the solid metal rod. And, and the comment said, hey, well, the Pittsburgh is actually just fine, but you can't use, you have to know that you're going to lose some compression if you use the soft uh, metal, if you use the soft hose. Um, and indeed, I switch over and I just use these. This, these are, it comes with these fittings where you can just like, you know, push it in the spark plug hole. You can kind of see, you know, those are the threads of the spark plug. You push it in the spark plug hole with some pressure and then you have somebody else turn the key. And this is like, I was about to go buy a new, I was about to go buy a new compression tester because like, oh, I guess the heart went from Harbor Freight to junk. So it worked. I actually got, went from 90 to PSI up to 130 PSI, which is where I expect to be. That's a nice healthy cylinder. And it better be because I just replaced everything on this head, right? Uh, by this point in the video, I've probably covered that so, uh, that you're watching right now. So, so at this point, um, I am now confident that my problem has nothing to do with engine timing or compression. I either have a fuel uh, issue or uh, a spark issue. Uh, the engine runs, it sparks, it idles, but when you give it gas, uh, it it dies. So my next move here is I actually have a spare carburetor. I'm just going to take this carburetor off and then swap it. Um, because I have to be honest, I actually did when I went out in the, the sandy desert with this thing and, um, I, I, I have one of these little, uh, one of these little canister filters that I put on the front of the carburetor and I did I didn't put a sock over it. And when I took the carburetor, uh, when I took this engine apart, um, the inside of the carburetor was just caked with like dirt and stuff like this filter did nothing. So I think that my carburetor is clogged up. So I think that the, the pilot jet uh, is just fine. Um, the main jet is probably clogged. And so when I go to ask it for more fuel, uh, that's probably what's going on. But I've taken the jets out and I've cleaned them out and I've verified that I can see daylight through them. But there's some other channel or something going on in that carburetor that's gummed up. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put the new carburetor that I have on and um, I'm hoping that it's going to fix our problem. Okay, so now for the valve adjustment, I've got I've got the head cover on, and uh, I've got the uh, valves. Uh, I've got the engine top dead center, and again, you know, kind of earlier in the video, you'll see how I or and maybe in part uh, going to pop top dead center is probably in video two or or video one, but basically, um, I'm going to put the the service manual instructions up on the screen. I just kind of want to put them in some context. So this is your intake valve. How do you know that? The carburetor is right there. So this is your intake side of your engine. This is your exhaust valve. So what you'll do is loosen these eight millimeter bolts. You will push them basically to the outside. And then you're just going to come back one graduation mark. And if you look closely, you can see the graduation marks on there. So on the, uh, on the right side of the engine, you've got this little, uh, little cover right here that's basically just a window so that you can see inside to the, uh, to the magneto, right? Uh, the magnet, and then there's marks on the magnet. I made a suggestion in, in my stator video uh, where I actually go in and replace the stator. I make the suggestion that while you actually have this uh, engine cover off, 
that while you have the magnet exposed, find your top dead center mark, and then on the side wall, if you're in, if you're so so some some engines are set up where the where the viewing window is in fact right on top of the magneto, which is really handy. Um, in this case, you're trying to look at it from a perpendicular view that makes it really hard to see the mark on top of the magneto. So if your window if your setup is like this, then if you ever replace your stator and you have this cover off, you might as well just take a punch or a Dremel or something and just make a mark right on the side of the magnet right that's right in line with your top dead center uh, indicator. And that way you'd, it's just so much easier to see. Um, I highly recommend. Okay, so I'm gonna see if I can actually get it in there where you can actually see the, the manual mark that I made. See how I just have that like, I just took a Dremel while I had this, uh, this cover off and I was replacing the stator. I took the Dremel off and I basically just like made this nick in the magnet. So that's lined up with the top dead center mark that's on the top here that I have a hard time seeing because the window's on the side. So that gives you kind of a good view right there of what I did. And then remember, the reason you should be able to feel the play is because when you're actually top dead center, both of your valves are closed. So you actually, you actually do not have, uh, in theory, any spring tension. Um, both valves are tightly uh, closed, intake and exhaust, because that's where the spark plug is ready to fire and explode the air-fuel mixture that's, at the, that's now compressed, because you're at the top of the compression stroke. Okay, so I'm top dead center. So now I'm just gonna loosen these eight millimeter bolts. This is my exhaust one. Crack that loose. This is my, in fact, I'm gonna pull my spark plug wire out of the way. Oh, that's not good. I don't like, I don't like how that just happened. So I'll pull this out of the way. I have another one actually, I'm just gonna Replace that coil back to an old one that I had. That's unfortunate. Okay, so I've got these loose. I'm top dead center. So these are these are kind of loose, right? So I'm gonna I'm gonna loosen this other one just a little bit. Okay. So now that I'm top dead center, what I'm gonna do is just push them in and then I'm gonna go all the way till it hits the outside, and then all the way till it hits the outside. And then I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna go back, basically, so so here's where I, I'm top dead center. This is where it actually hits, right? Boom, the rocker arm just connected to the top of the spring. So now to gap it, I'm just gonna back it off about one graduation mark, and now I can tighten that bolt. And you, they usually do a pretty good job of staying in place. And you don't need to torque these. Again, these are probably going to be about your, you know, so the 70 to uh, 104 foot-pounds. I wouldn't do 104. I would just stick with like 70 to, or sorry, I would stick with about 90, you know, on these bolts. Just, you don't want to strip them out. So now on the uh, exhaust one, I'm going to push it all the way in. I'm going to go all the way to the outside. And then I'm going to go back to the left just one graduation mark, boom. Now that rocker arm is just barely lifted up off of that, that spring, and I'm gonna tighten it down. Okay, so at this point, uh, I'm ready to do my compression test. So I'm gonna pull the spark plug out of there. Um, if I don't know if anyone even uh, can tell, but uh, from, a, as for, from a timeline perspective, this is, uh, this is actually not when I was actually doing this. I've already been out ripping in the sand dunes with this engine and after I've rebuilt it, um, I just forgot to film this piece. So all the the red dirt, you uh, will see at the end of this video where this all came from. So uh, bear with me a second. We're gonna get the, uh, compression test, uh, the compression tester out and we're gonna see how much compression we're pulling. 
just uh, so everybody knows, like I actually already did, like whenever you do a rebuild like this, you wanna, before you actually put the valve cover back on, uh, make sure that you can turn the engine, you know, and that nothing binds up, nothing hits, you don't hear valves, you know, hitting. Then when you put the valve cover on, cause that's an overhead cam, uh, then you turn it slowly and you just kinda wanna make sure that nothing hits. Uh, in other words, you don't want that valve smacking the top of the piston or something like that and you find out your timing is off. So you just want to do a quick, you know, run through. I'm going to turn, just crank in the variator just a little bit, a couple of times. You know, it looks like everything's uh, kosh. So uh, now on to, uh, let's see what we got for compression. Okay, I got my gas pedal, you know, basically bungee corded open. Okay, so this is, this is my setup. I've got, uh, I've got the gauge here. I'm using the solid uh, rod adapter that comes with it. It's just slightly angled, only because that works just a little bit better for this setup. So I'm just gonna take this soft rubber piece. Again, I'm at, uh, I've got my valves adjusted. So I'm gonna take that and I'm just gonna push it in there. And then I'm gonna hold the gauge and just put a little inward pressure. It doesn't have to be a lot, just enough to you know, make sure that you seal that off. And then this is super hard to do, um, you know, holding the camera. So I'm ready to turn the key at this point. So I got to, uh, I'm just going to, you'll hear the audio, but I'm going to, and I'm not going to edit the audio out, but I'll let you listen while I turn the key and then we'll see what the measurement is. Okay. So... The gauge, the gauge is reading about, uh, about one, the gauge is reading about 105, so that's still too low. Um, so I need to adjust the valves uh, probably one more time. I did this one kind of quick, uh, just for the sake of this video. Um, like I said, with the red dirt on there, I've already actually been ripping out in the desert, and I actually already was able to get this thing up to 130 PSI. So uh, it's just, I just need to do one more quick valve adjustment. So I'm going to rinse and repeat the process I just showed you. And uh, I'm going to go back and just, you know, tweak, uh, tweak the, the adjustment one more time. And uh, I do, but I do know that I, I got back to one, uh, 130. Uh, and then at the end of this video, I'll show you kind of my first rip after this whole engine uh, top end rebuild and how well it was running. So. So, update on kind of where we're at uh, in terms of low compression, and the engine just does not want to run anymore. It idles fine. It starts up, it idles, and it idles beautifully. Um, but any, but then when you when you try to go give it gas, it just wants to like sputter and. So I'm gonna uh, a good a good portion of this video is gonna is gonna be the engine running just to kind of show you what it's doing. And after that, I'm gonna walk you through what I've actually done up to this point and then what I think the problem still is. So we're gonna go ahead and fire it up. it so basically um you give it too much gas and then the thing it just kills over so i've gone through you know is it a question of richness is it, is it a is it a carburetor problem um up to this stage i actually just barely got finished over the last about 10 hours um i've just finished uh going through and basically i've replaced the head so i've got a new cylinder down here I've got a new piston. I got new piston rings. Uh, I've got new valves, new valve springs. I lapped the valves, 
and then I adjusted the valves when I put the, the head cover back on. So what the, what's, what's going on here is there's, the engine is running at, na at this time no different after having done all that, uh, replaced all those parts and done all that work. It's running identically to the way that it was before. So this is not a valve problem. This is not a necessarily a cylinder compression problem. Um, well, I actually, I think it is a cylinder compression problem, but I think it's because I have a worn out cam. So at this point, um, I decided to put everything back together and fire it up. And, uh, and I just, I just thought I'd see, okay, has it made any difference whatsoever with new valves, you know, new, and, and it's not like it's wasted time because this, uh, this buggy is new to me. Um, uh, I, you know, it's nice. Now I know, uh, I know how many miles are, are on the head, on the piston, on the, uh, the, the piston rings, everything. So it was still worth it. It wasn't terribly expensive to do. Um, but at this point, um, it's running exactly identical to the way that it was before. Okay, so what I ultimately figured out after going backwards and forth, how could this be, I mean, this is just where you just bang your head against the wall because you know you've done everything right. Um, I really started this whole project because I had that problem with the stator. And if you'll catch that video, it's because the, the pickup coil wire had actually broken. All right, so I didn't have any spark. So I replaced the pickup coil while I was in here, I replaced the stator, and then uh, I was able to start the engine. Uh, so I had I validated that I had spark, and I was able to start the engine. Uh, I thought that I was well on my way, you know, to a a solution here. Uh, so the engine started, and it and it ran the way that I showed you a few minutes ago, and. Uh, I still just had problems. I, I'm thinking it, it. It seemed like a fuel problem. It seemed like it was running rich or, or, something. So as I went back through, I just started guessing, and I thought, okay, well, what have I changed? What have I, what have I done different from when it was before I even touched it? And I started going back and thinking through the parts. And for some reason, I just keyed in on uh, the pickup coil. And I was I, I could validate spark. I was putting the spark plug against my engine, turning the key. I was sure enough, I was seeing spark there. But I thought, man, you know what? I'm actually just gonna fix the old pickup coil. I'm gonna splice the wire and I'm gonna put it back in and I'm gonna see what it does. And guess what? The thing fired up and it has run beautifully ever since. So what actually happened was the part that I used to fix my initial problem, the thing that actually put the buggy out of service, was actually a bad part. It was either a bad part or it's or it's mislabeled for this in to to be used for this engine, but it fits in this engine perfectly. Like it's and it's it, the dimensions and and how it mounts in there, everything is exactly identical to the old one. So I think I got a bad pickup trigger, and so although I could see spark. Uh, there was probably something wrong with the, the timing of the spark. Um, when I checked the, uh, the ohms resistance on, on one, uh, on the, on the, the, the replacement tr pickup trigger that I bought, uh, it was reading about 700 ohms. The original one, once I spliced the wire and fix it, it was reading about 1400 ohms. So there's definitely a difference between the two. Uh, in terms of resistance and and that it was enough of a difference that that was the problem it was a bad and 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 you know I, I'm giving myself a little bit of a pass here because why would I think that was the problem I'm, I'm chasing a ghost here on on all of this trying to figure out I, I know I've done everything right what is going on so I, I'm giving myself a little bit of a pass overlooking this initially because I replaced the thing it's brand new it shouldn't be a problem but in any case, uh, that really concludes the head rebuild and uh, kind of the synopsis of why I was having problems in the first place. But now I have a brand new head. I've since taken it back out to the desert. The thing ripped.
Valley is like this. This place is awesome. Warner Valley.